Here it is, Epic Build 5 on the channel, this awesome looking book nook. I built it with the help of Scott over at Paladin Woodworking on this awesome wooden case. Some help from Wayne over at Wayne's Workshop in this cool smoke machine. And an awesome looking Yeti that I got from Lance and Kendra over at Barthel's Marvels on Etsy. Along with support from Woodland Scenics and Super Clear Epoxy to really help set this build apart. I'm going to show you how to make it this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. I've been hard at work the past four weeks working on this book nook, and I gotta be honest, every step of the way really has been a lot of fun. Trying to coordinate this project with Scott to build this awesome hardwood case with these LED lights embedded into it has been a lot of fun. Working with Lance and Kendra at Barthel's Marvels has been awesome. They're such a great uh, store to go check out um, Wayne at Wayne's Workshop, working on the videos with him for the past few weeks, and this as well, uh, has been great, as well as everybody over at Woodland Scenics and Super Clear Epoxy to really help bring this whole build together has been a lot of fun. Now, these builds do get really expensive, they take a lot of time, so if you can, visit me over on Patreon and consider supporting me there, I'd really appreciate it. And also, I'm going to do a giveaway because this also has a set of plans and it will help you really build a whole interior portion of this. Even if you can't build the wooden case, you can still build another case out of it, out of foam or, or cardstock or something like that as well to encase it. So in order to do that, just leave a comment below. Let me know what you liked about this build in the comment section and follow me on Instagram because that's where I'll announce the winner next Friday in my story. All right, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. Okay, I'm gonna kick this video off by starting a discussion on how I like to make my initial cuts with a big sheet of XPS foam. This is a two by eight sheet of XPS and I like to use a four foot framing square to make my initial cuts. And when I do that, I always make my cuts larger than what I need. So I'm going about I'd say maybe half an inch wider than I need to be here on the foam. I do that because, you know, if I'm pressing too hard or I end up getting a tear on the back side of the foam, I can make that clean cut on the Proxon and get my exact cut, just what I need, and have it perfect. Now, if you pick up the plans, it's going to help you with the overall, uh, you know, layout of the cave. As you can see, the cave looks kind of like a mouth from the side, right? And all we're trying to do is get our XPS foam to cover that mouth of the cave. So I got a pretty cool way of showing you how we're going to cut this out. Instead of having to gouge out through, you know, like a foot of XPS foam, we're going to do it in one inch increments. And as you can see in the background, I got nine what I call rings or layers to the cave. So each one of these plans is going to show you what you're going to need to cut out in order to achieve the look that we're going for. So I'm starting with the back of the cave. This back piece, you're not really going to cut out all the way. It's going to be the very back of the cave, but we need to cut the stencil out uh, just so we know what we're working with here. Now that was ring nine, the very back. This is going to be the next ring up, which would be ring eight. And we're going to work our way from the back to the front. And we're gonna kind of leapfrog from layer to layer. Uh, you'll see this, uh, you know, just in a few when we're working on the foam. Um, as we move through, we're gonna use the previous ring. Um, so in the next one, we're gonna use rings eight and seven, then seven and six, and so on. And you'll notice that each layer, um, the XPS foam is not as long, and that's so that we can fit our smoke machine and our lights and our battery compartments in the back of the box once we're done. Okay, so don't worry about when you cut into the foam, like there on the left of the, that foam sheet, you're not gonna see any of this when we're done. So obviously, this would be an easy project if you don't have a Proxon. Um, 
to just use an alpha knife because it really doesn't matter. We're going to coat all of this in sculpt -a mold by the time we're done. Now lining this up with the plan, you can see how I'm angling this section because the cave, we want it to like look like it's going up and out towards the back. Like you have to drop down into the cave to get to the scene that we're at. Now, yes, instead of going in through the side, I probably should have just went in through the top here. Um, but, you know, again, it doesn't matter. We're going to glue all these pieces together when we're done. And if you don't have the heat hot enough when you're pushing it through, uh, that's what happens on a Proxon. You end up uh, snapping the wire. All right, now everybody that watches the channel knows that I prefer hot glue over most other glues just because it allows me to keep working quickly and efficiently. You could use uh, tacky glue or just regular PVA glue here if you'd like. Now you can see I'm just gonna carve this little section out there that I showed with the clay sculpting tool, like so. And that's gonna be the look of the back of our cave, but not completely because again, we're gonna coat this in sculpt mold Now kind of pay attention here closely if you can. This is going to help us get each sloped angle of the back of the of the cave. And we're just following that rough angle. Uh, I got that off of the plan. You know, and if you don't want to pick the plans up, not a big deal. I really just we're making the cave entrance kind of sloped back and up. For the overall look. And you're just gonna keep leapfrogging this typical layout all the way until you get to the front of the cave. And that hole there in the left side on the top, that's gonna be for our smoke machine. Now I just want to show this and then we're gonna move on with the project. But it's just that once you start getting towards ring six all the way to one, you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing that you're doing on the bottom to the top as well. Again, to give it that look that the cave is going back and in. It gives the illusion that you've got depth uh, and that it's curving up and out at the end. And you can see how each layer gets smaller the further back we go. All right, now it's time to cut out a section on the top of the cave that nobody's gonna see. Uh, and this is gonna be so that we can stuff our excess lighting in this and give us an area to run the lights up and over the box. Now, obviously I'm using a really nice wooden box that Scott made from Paladin Woodworking. Uh, if you don't wanna do that, you can make the exterior of this out of XPS foam or chipboard or some other material. Uh, you're still going to need this space in the top if you want to run some lights. All right, now we got to add tons of details. We can't just have a cave entrance with a nice cool battle scene with the Yeti. We got to add all kinds of cool stuff. This is just the beginning. We're going to add this really cool uh, skeleton of a horse in the front. That along with the Yeti and the skeleton you're going to see in the video is from Barthol's Marvels over on Etsy. Check them out. And I'm just trying to curve the front of this because, again, we're going to add sculpt -a mold even to the very front of the cave because we want it to look uniform. So we need to leave a little bit of room on the front, you know, to have it, the sculpt -a mold, blend nicely into the exterior or to the front of the wood box or whatever box you're going to use. 
And this project is very forgiving. As you can see, I'm just kind of cutting this section out uh, for the horse skeleton. We're gonna pour some super clear epoxy. Really cool product. And I'm doing this right here to the back just because I want to make sure that I've got a good flow of the smoke and plenty of light can reach the back of the cave from the smoke machine. And that smoke machine's from Wayne's uh, workshop. I had a video, I'll put a link up above to that video if you want to see how that goes down. And now I'm just pouring, uh, this is some hydrostone and I'm using some Woodland Scenics um, rock molds for that. I'll put a link up above to my video on how to cast with Hydrostone if you're interested. Now most of this cave is going to be ice and snow. But I thought it would look a little too, you know, uniform or too, too monotonous, I guess, if it was just all that one uh, material. So we're going to add some cool stone features, break up the blue and white with a little bit of brown. And you want to get these close so that they fit. Don't worry about them fitting exactly because you're not going to ever see right where they're butting up to the XPS foam. Now we're going to start gluing these layers together as we work our way out. And I wanted to have a really cool frigid looking icy frozen river running through this whole thing. We're gonna put a really cool icy waterfall in the background before we're done. And we're gonna have this pour out over the um, encased uh, horse skeleton that's gonna be in the front of the book nook. And to make things kind of pop out literally on the book nook, we're gonna put this little ledge or landing and we're gonna add some cool features to that as well. Now, if you look at the book nook straight on without any type of stalactite, it looks okay, but you know, it might have a little bit of a rectangular look to it. We're going to get rid of that look real easy by adding these features, uh, one in the back and one in the front. It really breaks up that rectangular outline. There's a cool little trick here when working with sculpt mold you can use a vacuum as you're pouring it in because all those fine particulates, um, there's no way to keep them from escaping, uh, even when you're adding the water. I ended up putting a really cool um, 5500 CFM hood in my shop uh, after I had done this video. So now I got a really cool spot to airbrush, to work with epoxy and um, you know cutting foam and all that. So I'm really pumped. I was able to do all that with the help of my patrons. So thank you all for uh, helping to support the channel. Now this gets fun, just grab uh, a glove on, grab that sculpt mold and just smear it all over the cave. We use a little hot glue obviously to glue this section in and you want to make sure that the sculpt mold doesn't have a lot of really fine points to it. Uh, we're going to go here in just a minute, you're going to see I've finished with the sculpt mold, I added some water to that bowl and I'm just rubbing it down so it's nice and smooth. Uh, any research that you do, you look online, almost every ice cave you see, you know, has that really nice, glossy, smooth, shiny look to it. And you can see how easy it is to achieve that effect just by getting some water on your glove and uh, smoothing that out. All right, you might have seen this technique to get a nice flat or straight cut on XPS foam. I did it in my haunted house video. Put a link up above if you want to check that video out. And I tried to do it um, without this method as you can see. 
didn't look good. It doesn't matter, you're not really gonna see it anyway, but I just want to show that technique again. Now we get to get messy here and do a bunch of Mod Podge all over this whole thing. It's a mixture of Mod Podge and some black paint. And I took one of my small brushes, well, medium brushes really, and I just cut it with a pair of wire cutters. And it was able, it really helped me get into all those little nooks and crannies. Now, these are the key colors that I used to achieve the icy look of this cave. Those three, along with white, obviously, as well. So when I first painted this, you know, I was a little nervous. I'm like, holy cow, this blue is really blue. <laughs> um, but it really turned out nice when I was done. And to break it up, um, I'm going to paint, obviously, the rocks in gray. And we're just going to keep working and layering these colors up as we work our way out. So the blue, we did 100% coverage, that dark blue. That aqua, we did maybe like a 90% coverage. This light blue, I'm doing probably, you know, an 80% coverage over that. And lightly touching up the icy river. And really, don't worry if you get any on the rocks. I'm actually going to hit them up on purpose. You know, this whole cave has ice and snow all over it. So you really can't go wrong um, with this. Just have fun painting everything up. Then once that completely dries, I like to take some white and um, just do a really nice uh, dry brush over that, maybe 50% over the whole project. The real um, you know, effect and the real look of this is gonna all come together once we put our um, epoxy over this. All right, now this is just a little Agrax earth shade that I watered down and I'm just doing all the rocks up on this because I want them to kind of stand out a little bit more obviously than uh, all the snow and ice in the build. And I added a few pebbles from my yard. You can see those as well in that icy river. Now to get some contrast here, I'm taking some Vallejo ink and I watered that down as well. And I'm just doing the, uh, you know, a little dab over a few areas in the river. And you want to hit up the back of that uh, little ice pocket as well. And then I thought it looked a little, it, it looked really good, but it still needed that really vibrant, bright, white, snowy look. So again, once everything was dry, I hit it up again with maybe like a 30 to 40% coverage of a solid white. Now here's where we take the super clear. This stuff is absolutely awesome. I mixed in uh, just a little bit of uh, blue ink and a tiny bit of green ink. You don't need much. Um, so when you pick it up, you really almost can't even see it on that popsicle stick. And then I used a nitrile glove and then I just smeared it all over the entire build. You want to make sure that um, you know, you're wearing obviously um, something over your face, something on your hands, and you really want to make sure that the build is completely dry before you do this. Now I'm just using a little UV resin just to kind of keep the horse skeleton at an angle. You know, it just makes it a little bit more interesting than laying it flat in there. It's going to hold it right where I want it and then slowly um, add the rest of the epoxy over that to encase them in a nice chunk of ice. A cool little thing when I was making this, I had like this much left over in the yogurt container that I was using. And uh, I'm like, oh geez, I can't let it go to waste. And it happened to be the absolute perfect amount of epoxy for this build so I thought that was really neat I wish I could do that with all the green stuff that I use I'd save a fortune now this is another cool miniature that I got from Barthol's Marbles and uh, it was like he was made for this just the angle and the way he was posed fit perfect right up against the back of the cave I had to add him in there now this is a really really cool technique for achieving an icy look when you're working with UV resin. Cotton balls. Now, the whole entire book nook is coated and is still hasn't cured of the UV resin, or the, I'm sorry, the uh, super clear. And what we're doing is we're gonna add some cotton ball to the back, real thin, and when this cures, it's gonna look like an ice chunk. It comes out really awesome. And you wanna put a very thin coat of resin over the entire nook. You don't want much. I had maybe an eighth of an inch buildup at the bottom of this 
uh, when I was done. Now using this realistic water from Woodland Scenics, I had a few strips cure, and then I'm gonna add those to the back rock in the back corner of the nook for a frozen ice waterfall. And before I like to apply those, I like to run more of the realistic water over them. It gets rid of any cloudiness that would be on the, um, the cured realistic water from the parchment paper. It makes it nice and clear again. All right, this turned out so awesome. I absolutely love the way these icicles turned out. This is how I will do icicles forever. All you have to do is take a little bit of clear packaging from you know any toy that you might get. And don't worry about the exact look of it. You just wanna bend it up roughly into the shape of an icicle. Something like that. And make a whole bunch of different sizes of this. Then we're gonna go back to our cotton. And you wanna get a nice thin sheet but if you get too much, it doesn't matter really because you can pull this stuff off in strands and um, you can work with it and save it because unless you hit it with the UV light, it's not gonna cure on you. So just wrap this around the clear plastic and then we're gonna take some of this UV resin and over the parchment paper, we can pour it on there and have plenty of time to work with it. Again, cause it's not gonna cure until we're ready for it to. Now this little gadget is very helpful and allows you to keep working when you're doing this because it takes about maybe a minute and a half of this to cure underneath that light. So I like to pour the UV resin on here and I use a toothpick to smear it all around. And the interesting thing is it seems like there's always a little strand of the cotton that gets stuck to the toothpick. And that's awesome because it really helps you wrap the icicle and have it nice and tight. Um, when you're done, instead of having little wisps everywhere. So now we can attach it to that, stick it right underneath this thing. And I think this light was maybe like, I don't know, 15 bucks or something like that on Amazon. I'll have links in the description below to all the items you see in this video if you want to pick anything up. And here's just a little ice sheet that I made. I did this on some parchment paper. I added the cotton to it as well. All right, now I wanted a frozen waterfall going over the horse skeleton in the front of the book nook. So I basically did the same as I did before. It's gonna be some UV resin with some cotton in it. And then I bent it over the edge of my work desk. And as I did it very slowly, as I was bending it, I hit it up with that UV light and it cured, um, you know, curved like that. And I got it as close as I felt comfortable without it dripping all over my floor. Let that cure. And now I can go back and add as many layers of ice with the cotton as I want over this to achieve any type of pointy icicle look, um, just like this. All right, now we're gonna take some really cool uh, flux paste from Woodland Scenics and I'm gonna add some snowflake as well from Woodland Scenics to that and mix it up. And this is gonna make an excellent, excellent looking snow texture. I got this to maybe about the consistency of a really thick fluff or like a peanut butter consistency, maybe a little bit looser than peanut butter. And you can see even before it cures, putting it down, it just looks like this nice fluffy snowbank. All right, now we're gonna take some of our ice shards here and place them down. There is some super glue that I'm attaching these to the edge of the bank and I'm using a little bit of accelerant from that super glue to hold them in place and to cover up obviously where they are right up against the bank. We're gonna just use some of that snow mixture.
I want to add a few details to that ledge, so I just added a horse skull and some snow. And now to the roof, we're going to add a whole bunch of icicles to the ceiling here. Now this Yeti looked absolutely awesome. I was in love with it. It matched the look of the Yeti from the Rime of the Frost Maiden uh, book from D&D. The only thing that was missing was the horns. So I'm just making some. Same technique as I did in my cave scatter terrain when I made the tentacles. You just gotta be a little bit more careful with how you're sculpting them. You know, to match the shape so that they're roughly the same. And I did a little research online to a whole bunch of different animals with antlers and horns just to see, you know, what the texture would look like. I just used a little pin vise just to drill a hole in the side of the head and then we can add the antlers or the horns to the Yeti. I wasn't really happy with the way the horns looked, so we're just going to fix it up with a little bit more green stuff around the base of the skull. Now we're going to break out the airbrush and just layer this thing up. I did a nice uh, base coat of black and I'm using a bunch of different grays and I'm adding a little bit of blue and a little bit of white as I'm moving up later layer to add a nice white look to the Yeti but also pick up some blues, some reflection off of the cave uh, as well. And the technique that I'm doing here is a little bit of just wet blending the muscle features on the Yeti. I'll put a link up above to my miniature painting video if you want to check that out. It goes a little bit more in depth into some of these techniques. And this is a really cool technique for texturing. I wanted his hands to look like leathery, um, you know, hands. I, I pictured, <laughs> believe it or not, the uh, Yeti from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. If you look at that, he had like really leathery looking hands and I thought that was cool. We're gonna achieve that just by putting some uh, line work on his hands. Now this is a really awesome model, but the fine detail um, is missing for fine hairs like that. Um, and I wouldn't expect them to be here, but we can overcome that with a good brush, uh, some thinned down paint with some flow aid, and just adding a few hairs in key locations. All right, and I did just a little OSL on the eyes of blue just to have them pop and glow. And uh, yeah, I thought he came out pretty cool. All right, now we got our hero that I painted up. I didn't want to show him as well. Uh, that would have been uh, another five or 10 minutes in the video, but we just glue him right into place with some hot glue as well as the Yeti and then we can start adding some snow effects on the both of these guys. I think our adventure here is in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> Alright, now we take that snow mixture from earlier and we're just gonna put some around the base to cover up the hot glue and you gotta add a bunch of this on the cape and his boots as well. All right, now more details, let's keep going. I added a rust effect to a very tiny, as you can tell, treble hook from an old fishing lure that I had. And um, we're gonna wrap some butcher's twine around it that I've colored in a tan color. And we're gonna have a grappling hook that this guy used to climb the mountain 
And when he finally reached the top, he had a nice surprise waiting for him. <laughs> Alright, now this stuff is really cool for adding the frosted icy look around the edge of this ice patch or this block. And what you want to do when working with this is instead of just dabbing it, you want to rub it into um, the outermost edge first. And it really kind of helps it kind of set into the epoxy. And then as you work closer and closer towards the center, then you can start dabbing it. I found that worked best. And along the very outermost edge, you know, I wanted to pull it up a little bit. And I did this and I let it cure for, you know, about a day or, or so. Um, and I really loved the final look. Now we can take some of this paste and I'm just putting a little bit on here. You don't have to worry about being exact. You know, you got water rolling over the edge of this. It's going to splash everywhere and freeze. But I want to have that look of that frozen ice running down the front of the ice here. All right, now we got some cool footage from Paladin Woodworking of his laser machine etching in the uh, book cover to the Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. And it was a really cool technique. The laser machine etched in the design, and then Scott was able to pour some uh, colored epoxy uh, in that um, laser where it, where it had burned that wood out. Then he just used this router to cut through until he reached the epoxy and uh, it was really neat because then we were able to uh, or Scott was able to add some lights to the back and light this whole thing up and it's a real fun project working with Scott on this because you know he was working on one thing I was working on the other and we had to make sure that all our dimensions and everything fit just right so that when I went and actually picked up this box um, my work would slide in nicely and fit so, um, good job, Scott. It was a lot of fun uh, working on this. All right, now I'll put a link up above to my video that shows how uh, this awesome little smoke machine works. This is from Wayne's Workshop. And we're gonna add this right to the back of the, uh, the top of the book nook. And we're gonna have a really cool light and frosty smoke look running down the front of this when we're done. And that's it. We're all set and ready to show it off. Well, there it is, my Icewind Dale Rhyme of the Frost Maiden book nook. 
I want to thank everybody again that was a part of this project. It was a lot of fun working with everybody, and it really came together real nice. I got to be honest, I know it's a book nook, but it's probably going to be a centerpiece on my shelf as a standalone piece. Now, I also want to thank all of my patrons. I'm making a lot of changes this year to the channel with regards to my studio, equipment, gear, uh, lighting, all that, and it's all made possible by the support of the generous support of all my patrons. So thank you very much. And also, please leave a comment below. Let me know if you like this or not, and follow me on Instagram for your chance to win a free set of plans to build this as well. All right, until next time, I'll see you around.